Hey, moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Look at me! Look at me! I'm the Wooa Waterboard, dude! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Oh, boy. We're in the knee-deep in the bye week here. And, of course, we have, are drama-filled with one Jerry Jones. You know, I have to, um, things happen in life for a reason. And yesterday was perfect timing uh, to meet Aaron. Aaron ended up giving me um, all kinds of Dallas Cowboys bobbleheads. Uh, we're going to be giving some of those away. And um, there was all kinds of stuff in there. That's where I'm working on. Uh, my wife's going to probably redo the section over here and put some of the stuff up. We've got a Dallas Cowboys biplane and everything else and Dallas Cowboys you know car and <laughs> Dallas Cowboy bus but it's the football here that actually is the thing that is a reminder Aaron thank you very much man for for what you've given me and all but this right here is the Cowboys 40th anniversary football this is the history of the dallas cowboys up until 1990 or, i'm sorry till uh the year 2000 and it's amazing because as you go through here you see nfc east champions 66 67 uh, nfl capital division champions 68 69 nfc champions uh 1970 75 78 um NFC East Division Championships that start from 73 and go to 98, because now again, this stopped at the year 2000. Uh, Super Bowl champions, 71, 77, 92, 93, and 95. There, there it is. It's all, it's all right there. And it's a beautiful thing. The sad part is we have 24 more years since this football. 24 more years and the sad part about it is the only thing you can add on there is nfc east championships no nfl nfc championships no super bowls nothing and that has all been under jerry jones yeah from chan gailey uh to, i can't remember his name he was the special teams coach that was Five and eleven, three years in a row, to Bill Parcells and Wade Phillips and Jason Garrett, and now of course Mike McCarthy. We've actually been more blessed than others as far as quarterbacks go. After having the whole kit and caboodle of all of the you know the, the revolving door of quarterbacks, you've had actually stability for about the last twenty years at quarterback. You've done well with that, not by planning, but pure by luck. Tony Romo undrafted. Dak Prescott being basically the last quarterback left in the fourth round. And instead of following up with all that, we have wasted those opportunities. What doesn't make sense to me at this moment is, and you know what, I get it. You, you may not like the team as it's currently constructed and you want to start over and rebuild. I get that. But if you're going to do something, don't half-ass do it. If your plan was to set up Mike McCarthy for failure, why didn't you just get rid of him and start the process over sooner? It makes no sense to waste a year. Because literally, that's what the Cowboys did. I guess there's no surprise there because they waste time when they go to sign players that they take their time to make mistakes. It doesn't make any sense. 
because if you're rebuilding, why resign Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb? Why not just say it's the Trey Lance error since you figured he was valuable enough to spend a fourth-round pick for that we could have used to get a running back or his $5.4 million, $5 million contract could be used for Derrick Henry. The moves Jerry has made has just obliterated any hopes of winning a Super Bowl, although he has you believing every year that he is. Now, here's where it's funny because Sean and RJ, it, this is where it, it's, it's kind of crazy. Jerry Jones blows up on, you know, 105.3 The Fan, and now all of a sudden we have Saint Sean and RJ. Those poor guys, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we feel so bad because Jerry, you know, threatened to get them fired. Oh, my God. Those poor guys. When those guys have not exactly been, you know, you know. But let's listen on the Dan Patrick show because we got RJ on there yesterday. We played a portion of an interview. Jerry Jones does a weekly interview on the flagship station for the Dallas Cowboys. And he does that every Tuesday, 105.3 The Fan. I want to play you the question that was asked. I want to put everything in context here. So here's the question that was asked by the co-host uh, to Jerry Jones. Jerry, 1970, a little different from this past off season in building the team we're talking about today, which there was a lot of criticism that you guys didn't add, didn't spend, and don't add, and don't spend, or, and are not aggressive enough with some of the problems that are still haunting the Cowboys today that we see play out on the field. That That's the point of talking oh. about the offseason. Oh, wow. Okay, so Jerry then goes off on a tangent, but then he gets around to answering the question, and this is what it sounded like. Oh, I remember those criticisms very well. Okay, so what? Or are they playing out so to what? be accurate? What's your point? What's your point? This is not your job. Your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. Well, my it's, job is to so ask what job, or I'll get another. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions, man. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, we're just we're we're we're, we're trying to figure out why the no, team no, is. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You. I'm not kidding. You. You're not going to figure out it's uh, of what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are, uh, or any five or ten like you. You need to come to this meeting I'm going to today. There are 32 teams here. You're geniuses. So uh, Sean and RJ, the morning show on the Cowboys flagship radio station, 105.3, the fan in Dallas. So RJ Choppy joins us on the program. How did that interview end, RJ? Uh, we went into a couple of other topics, and uh, we ended it as, as normal. Now, it, it went longer than normal. Usually they're about 15 minutes. This one went closer to a half hour but yeah it, it ended you know obviously less contentious than it was in that moment but when it ended we did know that that was not a normal Tuesday appearance from Jerry which we've had we've had almost 300 of them with him it's it's been 14 years that we've done that interview with Jerry uh basically the same time on Tuesdays and we've never had anything like that any follow-up from Jerry Jones after the interview, given the fallout from it? Wow. Uh, no, not to us. And, and we haven't heard uh, anything, and I'm sure that it would have been relayed to us had there been. But uh, no, and we actually talked yesterday. You know, we, we were wondering if uh, he would call in today. Uh, he, he has an appearance uh, Tuesday on the station and then Friday on the station. Um, Tomorrow. So he had, we haven't heard from him Um that may change as the week goes on, but but as of now, no. Did you take the threat seriously that you guys are interchangeable parts there on the flagship station? <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, everybody's interchangeable, I suppose. But uh, he seems serious, no, I, RJ. <laughs> it it did seem serious, but you know, we were sitting there wondering: was he talking about like removing us physically, uh, or just he's going to just do his interview? Uh, on another show on our station at a different time of day, which I mean, if he wants to do that, I mean, that's I suppose that that's his prerogative. But no, our our company, our bosses have been behind us. They've 
not said a word about that. But your job is to, I mean, I, I don't know if he expects team-friendly questions. I don't know if you've ever felt the need to do that to him. It certainly didn't sound like when you said, hey, that's not my job. Your job is to ask questions that fans want answers to. Uh, you know, does, has he ever submitted questions or said you can't ask me about certain things? He's never submitted questions. Um, there, there was maybe one time, and I think this was um, eight, ten years ago. It was it was about week three or four of the Colin Kaepernick situ- uh, uh, discussion that was going on, and they were and we had asked him three and four weeks in a row about it, and they were just like, let's just move on from that and let's talk football this week. That's the only time uh, he's been great. Like he, re- this that's why this was so surprising. He's never been sensitive uh of all the owners that we've dealt with in town uh and even owners in that we've had on from other markets we we've never had one that uh is more accepting of difficult questions we don't get personal with them that, that's like the one rule like every media member here knows it don't talk family with them don't get personal he's never had a problem with answering tough questions. When you're the owner and the GM and you put yourself out on radio twice a week, every week, uh, it's 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 hard to avoid those questions. To his credit, he's never had a problem with them. And that's what made this so like surprising and, and, and disappointing, to, to be frank. Yeah, there you go. So, E-A-G-A. We don't want to hear Jacob Sports. Lord knows I got enough of that yesterday. So... Here's the bottom line. Here, here's where actually you want to say make it make sense because we have, as crazy as it is, RJ and uh, Sean and RJ's show is blowing up. Blowing up. Making more money, getting more views. Jerry Jones, ain't nobody talking about the molly whopping that we got from the Lions. It almost makes you feel like this is manipulation by Jerry Jones. I'll take the bullet right here. I'll look like the bad guy, and we'll stop talking about the worst beating I have ever had as owner in the 34 years of owning the Dallas Cowboys. That's what it literally, literally, think about it, people. Think about it. Think about it. We're not talking about anything else other than his attitude. Now, I will say... He is definitely feeling the heat more than any any time before. And it seems like people are a little bit more ready to come out from behind the bushes here and say something to him as opposed to, we can't say anything about Jerry Jones. This is interesting because when you listen to to this clip from Kevin Gray um, about Jerry Jones being a petulant child, but the point of all of this and the way that Jerry lost his mind during that interview is the fact that when you look at his team and what they are and what they are not, it is in the image that he's created. There are questions about whether or not this team is S-O-F-T. And if it's any soft. indication on whether or not you feel like or I feel like that the Cowboys are soft, look no further than their owner who acted like a petulant child when getting the kinds of hard questions that are deserved to be asked of him based off the lack of success that this team has had in terms of championship success over the last 30 years. If he cannot handle the kinds of questions that are accurate and fair based off of what he hasn't been able to do to make this team successful, he needs to get the hell out. Wow. That's Kevin Gray Jr. And he's 100% right. And when you have Jerry Jones constantly on the news and, you know, doing a show on on Tuesdays and Thursdays and literally telling you we're going all in, we're going all in and you're bringing in U.S. U, uh, UFL guys. Those are your signings of free agency. You're letting go starters left and right, not replacing them. And your big move is we're just going to resign our quarterback and we're going to make sure it gets the most views and stuff because it's on opening Sunday. We're going to hamstring the quarterback and the wide receiver because we're going to make him wait to get paid. And we're also putting out there to the players, hey, look, if you are a top-line player, you ain't got to go to training camp. 
You just sit around and wait to get your contract and waste a season. Because all of this stuff, when we go back through here, and like I said, we could get the 60th anniversary one, and again, Super Bowl era, NFL cha uh, NFC Championship, those will be blank. They'll be blank because it's Jerry Jones. Because here's what always happens with Jerry Jones. Every single time we do this bullshit with contracts, with D-Law, D-Law wanted to get paid, had played, you know, outplayed his rookie contract. You know, we heard Stephen Jones say, well, we thought we had a deal for about $18 million a year, you know, when we were at the Combine. Now they want $21 million, you know, and uh, we have to kind of get this thing together. And the negotiations drug on and drug on and drug on till finally D-Law said, you know what, that's cool. Don't pay me. And since you're not going to pay me, then you won't need my services, so I won't get my shoulder operated on until I get a contract. And it was May when it was done. And that ended up being he got his shoulder surgery. He had rehab and wasn't able to lift a weight all summer. And then he starts the season with a weak right arm. Something you need as a defensive end. That season was wasted. Then you have Zeke Elliott who said, hey, I'd like to get a contract. Well, you know, we're not going to reset the running back market here and things. You know, Zeke, you know, we love him and everything else, but we're not going to do that. And here it is. He holds out in Cabo. They finally, you know, we, we hear Jerry Jones saying, Zeke who? Zeke who? Oh, Zeke who? Yeah. And then finally, out of desperation at the last minute, get it done. And Zeke's year, not good. Missing training camp matters. And then here we go, repeating the same stupid stuff. Instead of saying, CD, let's get your deal done last year, like we talked about, where they could have gotten him for about $25 million on a long-term deal because that's where the market was. We literally waited until the end of training camp, having hard feelings. Now, this is the part I want you to understand here. When you do the things that you do, and this is where Jerry Jones keeps saying, well, you know, that Green Bay game, you know, uh, it, it, it bothers me, the Green Bay game. And I want to make people feel uncomfortable. And I'm going to tell you what this feels like to me. And James Franklin, high school player, I should have actually uh, asked him about it at my class reunion. But we had a quarterback who was a junior, and he was always giving us offensive lineman shit. Just always. And the last game of the year, what we did was we did the lookout block. We all went to the line of scrimmage, and we knew we were going to do it. And we all, at the snack of the ball and shotgun, turned around and said, look out. And he got molly whopped. Knock silly, probably got a concussion. But it was because of the environment and attitude that he had. You know, Jerry Jones kept preaching about how much that Green Bay game hurt. How crazy is it that that Green Bay game has now been repeated at home three times in a row? And it's all stems from Jerry Jones saying, I want people to be uncomfortable. You see what happens here. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to do what's best for me. And you could look and see in, in those games, some of those guys were making business decisions. You got the coach who is, of course, on the hot seat. And my thing is, is I don't know how you can blame the coach when you literally, literally don't give him what he needs to win. You know, all of the Dak Prescott haters and everything out there, you know, they're all having a field day. Mark, you know, Dak Prescott's a turnover machine. Dak Prescott sucks, man. Admit it. He's a bum and everything else. But when I sit here and I look and I see other teams saying, we need more talent. We need more weapons. You got the great Aaron Rodgers out there, right? Aaron Rodgers, three-time MVP. Let's go get Devontae Adams for him. We got Garrett Wilson. We got it. But, but you know, let's go ahead and get him another one. 
you got Josh Allen out there. You know, Josh Allen is supposed to be the second best quarterback in football. Let's go get him Amari Cooper. We, we, we need more here. Jerry Jones is the only guy that's delusional enough. And I don't know if it's he's really believes this shit. And if he does, maybe he's getting senile. But nobody wins more games in football by not having players on the field. And all of this has continued, this cycle, since he fired Jimmy Johnson with his desire to prove that it's not Jimmy, it's me. Well, Jerry, finally people are telling you, it's you, bro. You suck. You suck. Now, I don't have any delusions of thinking that Jerry Jones is now going to say, you know what? Y'all are right. I'm not a good GM. My son is not a good, you know, uh, a finance guy with the caps and things that we're just going to hang out in the luxury box. And, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make Will McClay the GM and, and you know, the, 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 an evaluator of talent and let them take care of the draft and things and step away. I don't have that delusion. I don't have that. I believe that we are headed down the road of Al Davis, where Al Davis ran the team in the ground and then handed it off to his son, who it still seems like are doing the same stupid shit. Sorry. I, it's hard to be excited about the Cowboys right now. Let's get one more of these in here too jerry 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 you know better than this you don't have to threaten to have somebody fired just because they're asking you the questions that you know every cowboy fan wants them to ask jerry you're always talking about how those fans are, are the ones that this whole thing yeah, is all we do about all that pleasing the them fans. that's the bottom line right the hosts on the radio this morning on the fan they were asking those questions in a much more courteous way than those fans would be asking if they ever had a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with you and let you know what they really think about the way you've put this roster together. One of the things I've always admired about Jerry Jones is his ability to almost enjoy the give and take with the media, to take the criticism, at least publicly, in a good-natured way. Any publicity is good publicity and all that. But this display this morning, it's just a bad look. It really is. I know, and I've seen firsthand how generous, how gracious, how good-hearted Jerry Jones can be, but this little display this morning, that was ugly. That was a billionaire bully pissed off because he wasn't hearing exactly what he wanted to hear. Sports will do that to you. It'll knock you down a peg or two. Jerry knows that, but he also knows better than to act the way he did this morning. You know, we all have moments when our emotions get the better of us, and most of us in this business have been on the receiving end of a Jerry Jones outburst. It happens. Jerry has fired team-employed broadcasters before. But don't make that mistake again, Jerry. Don't blame the messengers, Jerry. Point the finger of blame at those who deserve it. Your players, your coaches, and yourself. There you have it. There you have it. So, I don't know where we go from here. Clearly, we are a wreck. We've done nothing to try and make a team that fell short last year better. No matter how much, how excited we have been about, you know, the prospects of Agent Zero stepping up and being um, a really great linebacker or that Mozzie Smith is going to hold down the fort in the middle or that Jalen Tolbert, you know, is going to be able to step into the breach and be really, really good and that Dak Prescott's going to help to overcome the offensive line struggles early on, a lack of running game, and so on. I said before that in order for this team to be successful this year, we literally have to thread the needle and have everything go perfect. That we were going to need Diggs to come back healthy. That he would be able to take off where he left off from the injury as a shutdown corner. That we were going to need that Agent Zero was going to be great and that Eric Kendricks was going to be a really good linebacker for us to stop the run. That Mozzie Smith was going to take a step forward towards being above average at defensive tackle. That Zeke Elliott 
could be a good short yardage back, and that Rico would be lightning in a bottle that we just ne- – potential that was never tapped. And that our two rookie offensive linemen would come in and solidify the offensive line. <sighs> oh, and that Jake Ferguson would become Travis Kelsey. If all those things happen, the Cowboys, they're a really good team. Oh, and that we stay healthy. <laughs> and unfortunately, we've not been able to stay healthy. And those metrics that we looked at and said – we need to happen, they're not being met. Our running game is an utter disaster, and every week I want to throw up my Italian sub because I see Derrick Henry literally on pace for 2,000 yards and an MVP, literally. I sit there, I see Trey Lance sitting on the sideline where we used a fourth-round pick and $5 million and a half dollars this year that could have been used on drafting and running back or paying Derrick Henry. I sit there and I see Devontae Adams traded for a third-round pick. A third-round pick that could have definitely helped to spread the field and make the team a better team. And the Cowboys do nothing. So if your team does nothing, then what you can expect is the team will do nothing. Nothing. For more insult to injury, let's listen to what some of the other teams out there are doing. Looking good, right? A lovely suit. Hey. Wait, a lovely suit. Dan's got a tie on. I always have a tie on, Greeny. Thank you. You're not always. Not. Literally yeah. every day I'm here during the season. <laughs> but frequently you have like your shirt unbuttoned down to about here. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's Wednesdays. That's Wednesdays with J Mag. Apple meat. And the great Adam Schefter is here and ready to go. Let's do it. We're uh, going to keep Shefty busy today because the trade deadline is November 5th. But contending teams, as you are well aware, are making massive moves. This week alone, we've seen Devontae Adams to the Jets, Amari Cooper to the Bills, Cam Akers to the Vikings. The NFL in-season moves used to be a very rare thing. All of a sudden, we're starting to see more and more of it. Who among us can forget? Christian McCaffrey, a couple of years ago, the 49ers get him from Carolina. They went 10-1 and the rest of the way, made a run all the way to the NFC title game. That move made a difference. 2021. The Rams bolstering their roster during the season, adding Von Miller and Odell Beckham Jr. We all know how that wound up. That team wound up winning the Super Bowl, and both those players played huge roles in getting there. All the way back to 2010, Seattle, the in-season move for Marshawn Lynch. They would ride that all the way to the playoffs and beat the Saints in a playoff game thanks to Marshawn's beast quake run, which sealed it up. So that's the setup here. We have had those deals in the past. Again, we were talking about this this morning, right? Trade deadline deals used to be something, a big deal in baseball, big deal in basketball, used to be pretty rare in football. Not so much anymore, and we're bracing for more. Well, what's interesting here, to your point, is that the football trade deadline, usually in previous years, have been quiet. And over the last three, four, five years, with the new breed of younger general managers, there has been an influx of activity, an increase in activity. We've seen more and more trades to where, if you go back to the deadline day the last few years, there is a flurry of activity. There are a lot of moves made. And now, this has not happened. Tuesday, three weeks prior to the trade deadline, you get three trades. And now that sends a message to everybody else in the league, better get busy, better get busy sooner. And that becomes, I believe, a harbinger Mm. of things that are to come in the remaining few weeks here where you're going to see a continued uptick in activity where general managers don't want to be outdone by another general manager, Mm. and you're going to see more and more trades here leading up to the November 5th trade deadline. So we're going to do this two different ways. We're going to do it the responsible way by asking Shefty for some names that we might be (laughs) expecting to hear, and then we're going to do it the fun get-up way, where (laughs) the the rest of us are just going to make make fantasy football trades that we would like Uh to see happen, and then let Shefty tell us that they're not going to. But let's start with the... Don't rain on our parade here, okay? Give us some names that people 
people like you yeah. have their eyes on for real possibilities that we could see move to the next few weeks? Well, we saw two wide receivers dealt on Tuesday, Devontae Adams and Amari Cooper. And I think that is the position to watch here mm. coming up to the trade deadline. If we take a look at some of the names that could be available here in the coming weeks, you got Deontay Johnson, Jonathan Mingo, Adam Thielen in Carolina, Traylon Burks Carolina. and DeAndre Hopkins in Tennessee, Zadarius Smith, Darius Slayton, Mike Williams, Ooh. Zay Jones. There are a lot of wide receivers available if you decide that that's the way you want to go. Now, the thing to also keep in mind is how these next few weeks play out leading up to the trade deadline. Because if Jacksonville doesn't win games, are they all of a sudden willing to sell oh, off parts? The Cleveland Browns already have traded Amari Cooper. If they keep losing, are they going to sell more? I know people have brought up T. Higgins. That would be very un bengals like for them to deal him with their schedule lightening up in the second half. I don't see that happening, yeah. but these next three weeks help influence whether a team will or won't be active at the trade deadline, whether they will or won't be buyers or sellers. There's a lot to unfold here in the next few weeks. Fluid situation that changes all the time. But there are a lot of wide receiver names that if you're looking for one of those, you could find yourself getting a decent player. So, Danny, let's play. Let's make a deal. Give me a deal you would like to see take place between now and the trade deadline that you think would be an impactful one for a team trying to win a championship. The Detroit Lions trading for Zadarius Smith. Mm. The Aiden Hutchinson had you know, 28 the pressures. The next the on their team is the Josh Pascal with five. No contender needs more edge rush help than the Detroit Lions after the Hutchinson injury. And this isn't the end-all, be-all or the fixed problem, but Zadarius is a fantastic player. I think he's really good in the run game, better as a pass rusher. The Lions going into this past week were the best team in the NFC. I don't see them as that best team in the NFC now, given that injury. If they add Zadarius, they're back to being the best team in the NFC. But, but I'm just very glad to see that Dan's moved off his desire to get well, Miles Garrett or, or Max, Max Crosby. Crosby. I still Crosby. hold out hope. I still That's, hold out hope. Well, Chevy. to be clear, because you're telling us those are aren't going to happen. Te- teams, look, and let me say this, and anything could happen in the NFL always. Sure. We understand that. But teams are not in the business of trading away the heart and soul of their team. I'm aware of that, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I get that. The Raiders will not matter until they get a quarterback. And I don't see them trading Max Crosby, and I don't see the Browns trading Miles Garrett. I don't care if neither one of those teams wins any games up until the trade deadline. I don't think their stance changes. Okay, that's fair save, enough. You just want to save the guys, huh? Yeah, yeah. Get them out of there. Give him a chance. Yeah. Give him J-Mac, a chance. Give, me a, give me a deal that you could see happening that would make a difference. Well, Shefty said the wide receivers are at a premium, so I want to keep it right there. DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. Yeah. Well, Tomlin's flirting about playing Russell Wilson. Hopefully that he's able to get the ball out and get it on the edge a little bit more. Do you guys know who the second leading receiver is on the Pittsburgh Steelers outside the numbers? No, you have no idea because it's Najee Harris. He's the next guy in line after George. Pickens. They need help on the outside. No doubt. And a guy like DeAndre Hopkins who wins contested passes, he can go out there and win and really help them. That's a deal they need to make Monday. Yes. They need not to make it before Sunday because they play the Jets on Sunday. But as soon as they get through. <laughs> you want a Monday at 7.58 a.m. I, I, I need that. Right. I'll take it any time. I don't, Doesn't all these matter. Deals seem to- we know that the Cowboys aren't doing shit. We, we know this. That Jerry Jones is Jerry Jones. And this is what we got. Um, again, I just wish that instead of bullshitting us and telling us we're all in, you know, we're, we're going to be, you know, taking care of trying to win a Super Bowl, you know, and saying that and then your actions basically say we're not going to do anything. We, we don't care. And when it blows up, then you're pissed off at everybody else. You reap what you sow. Alrighty, good people. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And at least we have nowhere to go but up. Peace.